Hey guys, and how's it going? Welcome back to Eric's Creative. My name is Eric McGrew, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this Ryobi table saw right here. So if you've been following me on social media, you've seen recently that I bought a rigid um, R4512 professional contractor saw, or professional saws they call it, table saw, and it has a cast iron tabletop and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's about $580, I think, uh, brand new online from Home Depot and um, $600 and something dollars from some other companies. Um, it, I bought mine used, I didn't pay that much for it. And I bought it specifically because I needed to replace this saw here. So that may sound automatically like I think negatively of this saw and I want to make very clear that that's not the case. This saw is not a bad saw. It's not um, a saw that I would tell people to stay away from. I would say that it has its pros and cons though and for the kind of work that I'm doing this saw isn't the adequate isn't adequate for that kind of work. So what is this saw? Well first off it is a um, mobile or portable contractor saw. That's what it's billed as. It costs around $200, brand new at the store. Most Home Depots have them in stock. So it is, if you're getting into woodworking and you want to start with like easy to work with woods, then this is definitely something to, to kind of keep in mind. It has some unique features that make this saw valuable but it also has some um, cons that may make it a saw that you don't want to spend your money on and you may want to spend the extra $200 for a different, more um, professional quality contractor or um, mobile saw. So that's what we're going to go over. So this saw here is, it's filthy right now because I've been using it. I built the whole rustic reclaimed bedroom set that I just finished on this saw. And that really told me very quickly that this is not the saw that I need for my uses. So why? Well, first off, I was using really heavy, dense hardwoods like this white oak that's been reclaimed in 4x4 four four beams. And I even cut down some 4x7 beams um, or 4x8 beams really into this stock. And that told me um, a few things about this saw. One is that when I was using the very dense, thick stock hardwood going through here, the friction against the side of the saw and against the fence um, pushed the, the fence, I mean, I'm sorry, not the fence, pushed the blade and carriage unit a couple of degrees out of skew. So I cut a bunch of wood and it wasn't exactly at 90. Um, that, that happens more on dense hardwoods and when you get over like one and a half inch thick, I've noticed it to occur, but on like finished wood that you buy at Home Depot that's three quarters, I didn't have any problem. It stayed in skew or it stayed at 90 and it worked just fine. Um, so I work with a lot of thick hardwoods and mill them down on my table saw. So that was definitely something that said, hey, red flag, you need to get a, a higher end saw. Um, I did a number of projects on this saw though with poplar, a little bit of alder, um, some pine, and I never had issues with it really staying in skew that much unless I got into really thick wood. Any of the finished wood that you find at, or presentation wood as they also call it at Home Depot and that kind of stuff will work fine on this table. So it depends on what your project that you have in mind really are. But it does have um, a few cons to it besides just the blade issue that I mentioned. One of the cons is that it does tip fairly easily, forward or backwards, depending on how long of a stock you're using and how heavy it is, especially with like the oak, that was, that was a big deal. It can shimmy around fairly easily because it doesn't weigh that much, um, which by the way is a pro to this saw is the fact that it doesn't weigh very much. If you have a small shop, you can move it around and things like that pretty easily. Um, and then on the downside, the cons for me, it doesn't have a dust collection funnel in the bottom at all. It doesn't have any system for dust collection, which was an issue. Um, especially in small shops, you'll see that dust, that really fine dust just blows everywhere. So 
that that was a concern and an issue for me as well. And then the other um, con that this saw had for me is that after having used this heavily for two months, and I mean heavily almost every day for two months straight, minus the weekends, the armature bearings and everything for the saw drive are starting to sound, and when you turn it off, it stays running for a good while longer, which means the bearings are going bad, which means they weren't designed to handle the amount of work that I was putting into this. I was using it as a, a furniture maker saw every day for almost two months, and this saw was just not designed for that. So those are the cons. The lack of a dust funnel, the difficulty of keeping the carriage system for the cut degree, um, cut angle at 90 with dense, heavy hardwoods. Uh, the fact that it moves around and it can tip over fairly easily. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but also the T-slots are kind of weird. I didn't really like those. So those are the, those are the cons. The pros though to the saw are that it's portable. It's super light. It's made of a durable plastic that I haven't had any issues with other than the fact that it does allow vibration and it does shimmy around the shop. It does have an outfeed extender on the back side, which was very nice. It came with um, a side feed table as well that extends, which was pretty nice. And it came with a decent um, push stick. Not a great one, but a decent one. It's definitely comfortable in the hand and it worked pretty well. Um, I always use one of these, a handmade push stick, but yeah, it did work okay. And even though I don't have it down here, it does come with the anti-kickback paw and a blade guard, which I, I never use. And um, it also has a stand on the bottom down here for the um, fence when you're not using it. And the fence is pretty true has adjustment points for it if it gets out of true, and it locks pretty good. I never had my tent slide or move or anything like that. So that was really, really good as well. It has a nice on and off switch here, and it has a nice power cord, and the blade, I mean, the motor is pretty strong. Um, would it withstand many more months of use as I was giving it? Probably not. So, I mean, it's not made for that kind of work though. That's the thing to keep in mind. It only costs around $200, as I mentioned, and it's a, so it's a, it's a decent saw. Definitely something to look at if you guys are getting into woodworking and you wanna start with lightweight, small projects out of pine or whatever. And it does have the miter, which works pretty good for cross cutting. You can build your own custom um, sleds and things like that for it, which I have done. I even made a tapering jig for it, which works well. And, and those things, so the table has some options in that sense. It also has, even though I don't own it, it does have a, um, a, the ability to run dado stacks in here. And dado, dado, whatever you want to call them. But you have to buy a new plate with a wider throat. So um, you can buy that, I think it's like $25 or something. And you can run um, the dado stacks on it. So, the saw overall is a pretty good saw. Um, mechanically, it moves fairly easily and simply. Um, the, the fence works well. It's a little lightweight, but it does work well. The table's a little small, but it is mobile, and it's easy to move around in a small shop, which is why a lot of people buy these. And it is pretty rugged. I haven't had any issues with it breaking or anything like that. It does move and tip and things like that, as I mentioned earlier. So. There, there are definite pros and cons. Would I suggest it to people getting into woodworking? Yeah, it's a reasonable saw to start with. But if you're gonna go heavy into woodworking and start working with like really heavy woods and really fine, accurate cuts, no, I don't suggest this saw. It's probably not the saw for you. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview of the saw, what I think about it, why I'm moving on to a bigger and more expensive saw what the pros and cons of it are. Um, if I didn't clarify something or if there's an aspect of it that you'd like to know more about, please let me know in the comments below. I hope that the video was informative for you guys and beneficial. Please give me a thumbs up on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I've got more videos coming out, not on just woodworking, but also actually projects and actual projects and things like that. And if you guys, um, have any comments please or questions let them uh, let me know in the comments below and i hope to see you guys in my next video thanks for stopping by